This is the 11th generation of the Honda Civic. Now we've seen a lot of changes over the years where they kind of get confused whether they should go sporty or more conservative, but this is a really nice happy medium. And this chassis will also be used for the SI as well as my favorite, the Type R. Now we have reviewed the sedan before, but this is the hatchback, the sportier version. And I got a lot of compliments on it on my drive from Detroit to Buffalo. And you're gonna get to experience some of the things that I see as the highlights before you go out and make a decision, but let's take it for a drive. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. This is the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback. Now, like I was saying earlier, this is going to be the same platform used across the lineup. So you're gonna see it with different engine options and different sportier setups, whether it's the SI, which we'll also be reviewing, and the Type R, which I'm very looking forward to reviewing. But this vehicle has a different look, a sportier look because of that hatchback style. And it's funny, for a while, hatchbacks just kind of went out of style and now they're back. People want that sort of SUV kind of storage. It isn't an SUV, but they still wanna have a car. And yes, this is still a very popular car and it's also running for North American Car of the Year. Now on this channel, we do more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles. We also give you car smarts because knowledge is power. We want you to go into the dealership knowing what you want and certainly not overpaying. Let's get started with reviewing this car in 10 different categories. And we always start off with under the hood. Under the hood are two different engine choices. The two liter normally aspirated engine or the 1.5 liter turbo engine, which we have here. This has 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. There are also two transmission options, an automatic or a short throw six speed manual. And that is my favorite, but today we'll be test driving the automatic, which is certainly more popular. Let's start off by putting this vehicle in sport mode and see what kind of pickup we have. Here we go. Put to the floor. It, it struggles a little bit. It is a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. It is not a race car, we get that. But one of the things that it does have is good pickup for this class. I actually think it's probably going to do better for acceleration than the two liter naturally aspirated engine. One of the things I really like about this vehicle is fuel economy. My drive was all highway from Detroit to Buffalo and I was getting 38 miles to the gallon. Now combined, you're going to be somewhere around that 34 range, but that's 30 miles to the gallon of city. And with the cost of fuel being what it is, that's not too bad. And I think that's one of the things that people like about vehicles like this is it has enough pickup to get going. It also has pretty good performance mid-range as well. So when you need to go out and pass someone, put on that turn signal, put your foot to the floor and it goes. Now we are currently in sport mode. Let's drop that down to what most people will be driving in. It's a normal mode. I did use eco mode to get the best fuel economy because that makes the most sense on the highway. You're just cruising along, getting to your destination. And there was a lot of great features as we'll go through from safety to technology that really made the drive a lot easier than it could have been compared to some of the vehicles, not necessarily in this class, but in general. Vehicle has really good performance. It is not a sports car. It is not a race car. It is a sporty fuel economy, four door or five door, depending on how you want to look at it, vehicle. Pretty good get up and go considering. Once you put it into that eco mode, you push that button down, it does become very fuel efficient. And that's really where the secret is of a vehicle like this. Most people aren't even gonna bother using the sport mode. You might need it for passing, but I didn't find that need even in the eco mode. One thing I did shut off, and it saves maybe a tablespoon of fuel, is the button behind the shifter, behind the drive mode is an auto off button. And when you press that button, it shuts off the start stop technology. When you stop at a light, it shuts off and turns back on. It was driving me crazy because I was running a radar detector and it would turn on and off every single time. So again, this is a personal choice. It depends if you, you know, use devices that need consistent power or not. This sport touring vehicle with the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that gets really good fuel economy earns a seven. When it comes to handling for this vehicle, you're gonna be using it most likely as a daily driver. It runs on 18 inch alloy wheels, which makes it look pretty good and handle pretty well. And there is a spare tire that I do like. Now, as far as brakes, 
this vehicle stops pretty well. Very well balanced between the performance of the go and the woe. And when it comes to handling, this is as expected. Now you can shut off all the nannies that make this vehicle have all the safety features, which I prefer to be off. Again, that's a personal choice. Everybody's different and you can control the vehicle. If you're one that tends not to pay attention, you're distracted by the phone and life and everything around you, I get it. That's not unusual. That's where all those safety features we're gonna cover next will help you. When you're looking at handling, going around corners, this is really well balanced. It is, like I said, not gonna be flat in handling. It's not a Porsche 911. It is a fuel efficient five door sedan. And this does a really nice job. They did a, a nice job putting all this together in a nice balanced way. When you're looking at the handling of this Civic, because it is very specific when you point it, I was pretty impressed. And in this category, it earns an eight. When it comes to safety, the advanced passive safety features for this Honda Civic are standard. Now, how do you get to that is on the left side, you press a button and there it is. You can see right here that you've got your lane departure warning. You can turn that on or off. And then on the right side of the steering wheel, you dial down. You can have blind spot detection that is park assist. And then you've got forward collision between you and the vehicle in front of you. And then going further down, this is collision mitigation, which is forward collision warning. You've got your low speed braking control, blind spot information, and your road departure mitigation. I like to have all of those on, they make the most sense. Now, when you go back and you're looking at the center here, there's a few things I wanna show you. I was driving along the highway and I set up a camera on a mount. Yes, I was not holding the camera. One thing I did notice right away is if you can see this little picture of our little Honda Civic here, when I step on the brakes, they show up right away. When I shut off the headlights, the headlights go off. Do you see that? And now they're on. There are the headlights. So I thought that was kind of neat. Now also in addition, when you turn on the cruise control, you also have the lane departure warning, which is right there. And that tells you if you're, warn if you're going out of your lane. And then you can pick your distance control, which is to the left right there. Now, one of the things I did like is when you do set your cruise control, that you can see the lines when you're in the lines and when you're not in the lines. And when a vehicle comes in front of you, it shows it, whether it's a truck or a car super impressed with that safety and the fact that it was standard I think is really an important thing that they're not charging extra. The adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, and the rear seat reminder are now standard for all new vehicles plus that traffic jam assist. Very smooth, very natural, and very functional which I do appreciate. Heading over to the center screen under vehicle settings you can see all the different systems including that driver assist setup. Now this allows you to adjust the settings, the forward collision warning, the automatic cruise control forward vehicle detection beep. I like the beep off, as you notice I've changed that road departure mitigation, traffic sign recognition, you can turn that on or off, speed limiter and the driver attention monitor. Now you can set these up however you want. For example, if you go into this forward collision warning, it explains what it is. And a lot of manufacturers are doing that. Ford has been doing this for a while. And so you can set this up however you want. Just press that back button and you can decide what information you want and how you want it. The fact that every single feature is standard, that's what impresses me more than anything. And everything is here that you would need. When it comes to safety, this vehicle earns a 10. When it comes to visibility, there are a lot of factors in play. It is a part of safety and also this large front piece of glass is very helpful and you can see the roadway and of course adjust the seat accordingly. However, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you have a backup camera. It's about 180 degrees and I wish it was in a round view camera because some of the competitors do offer that even in this price point. Now looking out the back, you can see there are three headrests and because this is a hatchback design, there are some limitations. The sill level, which is where you rest your arm, if that's what you choose to do, is a little bit on the high side, but it does give it a cooler exterior look. On the other hand, it does limit the visibility for the first and the second row. When it comes to visibility for the Civic hatchback, it earns a six. When you're looking at seating, this is the most important seat in the house. This is the driver's seat. So maybe you're sitting in the passenger seat on a regular basis. You should note they're equally, as far as adjustments, the same. 
unfortunately, they're not very comfortable. And I just did a six hour drive from Detroit to Buffalo and thought, all right, this, this is a good test on seating. You can adjust it accordingly. You can lift up the front or the back, however you are based on how you're built and we're all built completely different. It's important that you sit in both the driver's seat, the passenger seat and the back seat because you might get stuck back there at some point in your life. Now what is positive with this vehicle is the adjustable height seat belts. Most of the vehicles in this category do have that and it's important that you don't have the seat belt cutting your neck. We want to be comfortable in this seat. Also note that there is a heated seats which is three stage heated seats. Our test vehicle does not have a heated steering wheel but those are just minor factors. It's important that you sit in any vehicle you consider buying before you make a decision. Let's take a look at the second row before we give it a rating. Coming around to the back seat, this is a huge improvement. Now when you look at vehicles in this class, whoever gets stuck in the second row sometimes gets stuck in the second row. This is not the case when it comes to the Civic. Although it may be lacking in amenities and accessories, what it does offer is a ton of knee room. As far as headroom, it's a bit limiting. Again, depending upon how you're built, you should have whoever sits back here on a regular basis, try it. If you have child safety seats, do the same. Put them in, put your kids in it. You don't want their hands all over the roof. Now, the other thing to think about is there's two latch systems. So you can get two people in the back seat. And when you pull down this center armrest, it also has two built-in cup holders, which I prefer over the plastic cup holders that pop out of the front. Now, behind the center console, there is nothing other than two USB-C connection ports, which is good when you have kids in the back seat. There is only one pocket behind the passenger seat. In the door, there is storage. One thing I did want to add is all the interior touch points, such as where you touch below the door handle and the door handle are all matte colored. They're made of a textured material, so they're easier to clean and you don't see a million fingerprints. Kids typically leave fingerprints from whatever they've been touching or doing or eating. So therefore, they've created a new type of textured material here. We're going to cover that in features. And it's also important to note that it's not just in the back seats. It's all over the place. They really thought about who's using it. And they listen to you as a customer, which I think is super critical. However, the back seats are not too uncomfortable, but the front seats, not so much. Because there is not a lot of seating comfort in the front, I had to give this vehicle a six for seating. Our test vehicle has the nine inch center screen and everything has been upgraded on this. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto integration is standard. You've got your Bose premium audio system is also part of our sport touring vehicle. When you press the home button, it's an actual button as well as the back and the volume dial is much appreciated. And I think one of the things is that many cases, the uh, audio system is a slide or it's something that's that's not an actual dial. I think that's needed also for changing whatever station or if you're listening to a podcast, you want to jump ahead, you can do that. Now, when you go into the all apps, you can pick and choose what you want, including AM, FM. What do you want on your home screen? I have everything on, but all of this shows on the home screen and this is important. You can shut it all off. You can put it all on. Again, that's a personal choice. Then you can go over here to the navigation system. Although this is not the most updated on the planet, it does look a lot better than what they had before. It allows you to zoom in and you can see some information. And on top of that, there are additional settings and they have that HD in here, which means you've got all this traffic information coming in from Sirius XM. Phone connection, I did use the phone. I had no problems with it on my drive from Detroit to Buffalo. No drop calls, everything worked as expected. Uh, FM radio, Bluetooth audio, really good for those podcasts. I listened to one part of the way back, uh, smartphone connection, trip computer, Sirius XM radio. By the way, the podcast total car score, we are hosting it and it is awesome. Sirius XM, uh, general settings is here. And then you have your vehicle settings. And this is all pictures of information that you might need. Driver assist, your tire pressure monitor, the meter setup, your keyless access setup, your lighting setup, door windows, and maintenance. So they made it really easy for people to feel comfortable with using this. In addition, you have your USB, your AM radio system updates, which comes down as needed for the maps clock Honda link, which is great for getting information, linking your phone to the car. So there's a lot of good information there. Smart shortcuts, that's down here. Somebody set these up for us, all these smart shortcuts, and you can set those up as you need. Your display mode, which Honda has improved. You can go all the way down to almost full darkness, and they've got really good 
depth of color because they changed the gauges in front of the driver to be digital and then your app installer. Everything's super easy to use and the digital gauges that are in front of you are also much improved. When it comes to technology for this vehicle, it earns an eight. When it comes to features, there's a lot of improvements and most of it's simplicity, making this vehicle easy to use and yet more modern. The thicker, beefier steering wheel, I really like. This allows you to change your stations on the left side. This is volume and changing that gauge right here in front of you on the left side. On the right side, you've got your cruise control and then the distance and the lane lines. That's all really important. And when you step on the brakes, it shows it right here. When the headlights are on, it shows it right in front of you. Really nice to give good information to the customer. Paddle shifts, I don't know who's really using them, but it's here if you need it. On the right side is your wiper blades, both front and rear. On the left is your headlights. When you press this button on the lower left, you get all of the adjustments for safety. And they're right here on the right side, so you can pick and choose what you want and adjust down based on what works for you, blind spot detection, all that. Like we covered in safety, all of this is here and easy to use. On the door, there is power mirrors and of course your window lifts, but there is no memory seating. Now this is where some interesting features come in that I wanna cover. Below the center screen is this metal grating. I think they did a nice job using real metal, not plastic. And these controls are easy to use. And the thing is that people want to adjust them how they wish to adjust them, and that's nice. So they're just little knobs that make sense and easy to grab no matter what size hands that you have. In addition, there's a lot of black gloss plastic, and that was something a lot of people complained about in the past. So what they did is they changed touch points, such as down here where the cup holders are, to a textured material. And the reason they did this is so you didn't leave fingerprints. This is like where your coffee spills or you know food from whatever it is you're touching or greasy fingerprints you're not seeing that here instead they made a composite material that makes sense this is all feedback from you as a consumer and you'll also notice that when it comes to the dials for the climate control those are actual dials and those were done this way because this is what consumers asked for make it simple don't make it complicated and light up those dials and they've done that Further down, you've got USB-C, two of those, and a 12-volt outlet, and then you've got your wireless charging. I'm charging up my backup phone right now, and there's some storage. Really nicely done. Further back, you have your regular shifter. I appreciate this. I call this a Prendel because there's no low, but it's park, reverse, neutral, drive. This is what they've changed it to. This is what consumers have asked for. Don't make it so fun and complicated. It just makes it harder for people to use on a regular basis. And then you've got your two cup holders. Behind the shifter, you've got your drive modes. And when you press that, you've got sport, normal, eco. Yes, it makes noises in each change. Below that is your auto off, which I prefer to be off but again that's a personal thing you save about a tablespoon of fuel if you use it then you've got your parking brake and your brake hold which is great for automatic transmissions when you're stopped at a light you can take your foot off the brake and you will not roll forward people have asked for that and actually it's one of the features i really do like i like the center console it's nice it's soft and then inside is more additional storage there are a lot of features on this vehicle, although some things are missing that should at least be available at an additional fee. But when it comes to features for this car compared to the competition and what they're including at this price point, this vehicle earns an eight. The all new design of the Honda Civic is quite an improvement in my opinion. I think they went almost too boring and now they've gone to this nice middle ground. Not too sporty, but something that you wouldn't be embarrassed to drive. Now I do like the new front end. They made some big changes. You've got your DRLs or daytime running lights that are LED. Lots of headlight, which is good for visibility at night. As you come down here, you can see this flat hood. And part of that is not perfectly flat, but it has some lines in it for aerodynamics and it looks much better and has an overall more modern look. I like the matte black here as well. 
keeps a car that does get dirty looking a little bit cleaner because in shiny black, you can really see the bugs and the dirt. The logo, not too much in your face and very conservative. Also note that the driving lights down on each side are LED and that's standard. When you come along to the side of the vehicle, 18 inch alloy wheels are standard. I like the new design. Again, very modern, very clean. And these run on all season tires because most people do not switch them for the winter. And this is a really nice tire combination wheel. It fills in the wheelhouse, which I really like. It's nothing worse than having too small a rim for this vehicle. Moving your way along, you've got a lot of matte black features, which is really nice for keeping this car looking clean. But then they added a little spot of chrome across the top, gives it a really nice clean look. Our test vehicle has a sunroof, and this is also an option you can go with or go without. I do like the matte black down here on this lower sill, again, giving it that sporty modern line because this is a hatchback design. As you move your way around to the back, you've got LED tail lights, and I like the new design. They just fill in this area, and then of course you've got that light going across the middle here rather than a separate third brake light well integrated and that conservative Honda logo. I like the fact that there is a wiper blade on the back. Not all hatchbacks have this, but I drove through some heavy rain. It was really, really helpful and it was easy to access because it's at the end of the stock where your wiper blades are. Further down, you've got two tailpipe openings. I like the fact they made them look like it's a sportier car, but the fact is this is a smaller engine and they're really trying to work with this look and make it not a fake exhaust pipe, but real. And then you've got the black rear diffuser. I think they did a really nice job on this design. There are a few things I'd like to see different on the inside, but I love the fact that they thought about who's using it and the, you don't want to have your fingerprints on things. So they muted down some of the interior features as well as the exterior, making it a really nice balance. But overall for designing this vehicle, it earns a nine. The Honda Civic hatchback is built in Greensburg, Illinois. It comes with a three year, 36,000 mile warranty, as well as a six year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, which is part of the reason why Honda vehicles are in such high demand when they're used because they last a long time and also the resale value is good. A three year, 36,000 mile roadside assistance plan is included. There is no basic maintenance, but when you're looking at some of the qualities of this vehicle, the build quality, the fit and finish, the materials and the quality of the paint and just everything you put this vehicle together, they did it right. And for this vehicle, for quality, it earns a 10. Coming around to the back when it comes to storage, you have 24.5 cubic feet of storage. And when you put the seats down, it's 46.2 cubic feet of storage. And that's a lot of space. That's why people like hatchbacks. When you have a coupe, you don't have that same space usage. And when you're moving a kid in and out of college or you're just moving stuff around, this is a great option. Now, one of the thing that this vehicle has, which I really, truly appreciate, is there is a spare tire underneath this cargo container. And that is what I really appreciate because when you have a flat tire, you don't know if you cut the sidewall or whatever might happen, a tire inflation product will only get you so far, but a spare tire will get you a replacement tire. And this is a full size spare with a jack. And that is really smart. Our test vehicle was a sport touring with the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. And there is an entry price of $29,500. You can get this vehicle even cheaper if you look at some of the lower level trims, it starts at about $23,000. That is a great value, which is why this vehicle has a really good chance of winning North American Car of the Year. This vehicle has a lot of options available, a lot of standard safety, which I truly appreciate. And that's why when you compare it to its competitors, and there's a lot of them from almost every brand, at least the Japanese and the Koreans, there's no domestics that compete in this category. But this vehicle really sells well for a reason. The Civic has sold well over 11 generations. It's had its highs and lows, but I think this is one of its high points. And for value, this vehicle earns a 10. Now, when you take all 10 categories together and you compare them against the competition, you look what comes standard as well as the design and the build quality and how they thought about people using it. There are some lows, such as the seating, and maybe the fact that the center screen is a little bit older style, but updated, and it's got standard Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and standard safety. There's a lot of positives. So I highly suggest you take this for a drive before you make a decision and check with your insurance agent because you will find this is a very reasonable price vehicle to maintain and to insure. But compared to the what else you're looking at, that's where the difference is. So when you've decided on the final three vehicles, contact your favorite insurance agent 
find out what the rates are. It might be better to go with the Civic or it might not. It depends on a lot of different factors, and we've covered that on our Car Smarts channel, which is also here at Car Coach Reports. The 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback has a total Car Coach Report score of 82. Now, if you got value from this video, make sure to like it and share. And if you have any additional comments, I did not cover every single little aspect. Ask your questions down below in the comments. I will get answers for you. If I don't have them, I'll contact someone on Honda on your behalf and get you an answer and put it back in the comments so we can open that conversation so everybody can learn. So when you go into the dealer, you can make a decision so you don't have buyer's remorse because a dealer's job is to sell you on the vehicle. Our job is to inform and educate you so you make smart car smarts decisions. We have additional information with other contributors on our channel in English and in Spanish at carcoachreports.com. I'm also co-hosting a podcast with Carl Brower and Javier Mota called Total Car Score. We talk to insiders in the industry, find out information that you're going to want to know that changes what the future of automotive is about. It's not all about electric. It's not all about autonomous. And we discuss that. You can follow me on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix. I appreciate your subscriptions and I look forward to seeing you next time.